the compassion of the goddess in a little lark. And the birds of Rhiannon will shield you from all sorrow until the dawn. What's up, witches? Now we're going to continue on in our goddess stories. And the first one in our Artemis series is going to be the first time I called to Artemis or called out to her. And I guess I should start off with a little bit of backstory about my experience as growing up and how I really, you know, kind of gravitated toward that archetype. When I was a little girl, everybody knew I was different. I was not like other little girls. I really didn't dream the same dreams or perhaps have the same um, overall you know, life path that they wanted. You know, I wanted to be outside playing in the woods. I had, you know, no need to dream of Prince Charming and living happily ever after. I was happily ever after in the woods. And I also had this really um, odd obsession with archery growing up and it's carried out through throughout my adolescence and, you know, that was like my thing was archery. Although I never really got to shoot a bow and arrow because according to my parents, little girls didn't really do that kind of stuff. But really, I guess the first verifiable uh, depiction of my goddess that I seen was when I was maybe three to four years old. Finn had this uh, little mermaid Sega Genesis video game and there's a level in it that's got um, like Greek and Roman architecture and, you know, statuary. And the worst enemy in the game is in it, and if you guessed it, it's my mom. Uh, it's a statue of her likeness, and, you know, she pursues you throughout the level and fills you full of arrows, and it's not a very fun experience. Uh, but that was really the first time I'd ever seen her, and it was a validation for me that, yes, you know, you can be a girl, and shoot a bow and arrow. You know, you don't have to worry about that. And then, you know, growing up in the 90s like I did, Xena, Warrior Princess, was my hero. And still kind of is. Uh, and I seen the goddess in that. And they had a depiction of her a little bit more ornate than, you know, I would picture her, you know, but whatever. She was in it, and of course they had the Hercules and Xena animated musical, which Finn and I adored, and uh, as siblings do, and we still do this by the way, we were like, okay, which one are you? And of course Finn automatically, I'm Aphrodite, and we're like, yeah, of course you knew that. Probably Cleopatra would be a better one, but that's Egyptian. Uh, but he, I never could figure out which one I was. And, Guess who was also in it, if Aphrodite was in it? Artemis. And he said, well, that's easy. You're Artemis. You know, she shoots a bow and arrow. And that was really my idea of that goddess, or of my goddess. And really, I put that whole thing behind me. Uh, and, you know, growing up, you know, that's how it is. And I really never thought of her ever again until I got to college. And I, it was my, my first 200 level Spanish course. And this has almost been 10 years ago, by the way. <laughs> but anyways, back to the story. It was my first uh, 200 level Spanish course. I minored in Spanish. And the professor went around the room and was asking, you know, what are some of the Greek gods and goddesses, of course, in Spanish. And... Um, so we were, we were going around the room and, you know, people were saying, ooh, uh, or, you know, like Zeus, Hades, Poseidon. Somebody had the gall to say Orion and not mention her. Of course, I, this is what's fun about it. And, you know, Aphrodite and Hera, and for some reason, unbeknownst to me, and I still can't figure it out, what put this idea in my head. But when he got to me, I blurted out Artemis. And, you know... That was really what put it into my head in recent times, you know, was hearing, or, you know, I just said it, you know, it came out of nowhere, like, I wasn't hearing what I wanted to hear, and so I said something that apparently everybody needed to hear, and um, 
it was maybe a year and a half later, you know, uh, on Facebook, either somebody tagged me in, it maybe Finn did, or one of my friends did. I don't really get on Facebook hardly at all anymore anyways. But back when I actually got on it, I got tagged and stuff like that, and it was, take this quiz and see which Greek goddess you are. And so I took it. And I don't think I got the answer I really wanted because, you know, when we read over, or, you know, I read my result, I was like, I'm nothing like that. And I won't ever be anything like that. I don't know if it was if I got Hera or I don't think I would have got Athena either. But so I decided to go look it up on my own and I googled um, list of Greek goddesses. And I stopped on a name. That I recognized and I said Artemis and I really I was like well I'm probably not going to be like her and I started reading and in fact I was I was like this sounds really familiar you know you know wow I really connect to her and you know I it kind of sparked an interest in me I've, I've always been interested in Greek mythology and this really fascinated me like I wanted to learn everything I could about her and it would be like on a monthly basis I would just get this odd curiosity to search about Artemis and I would find these articles that would say stuff like the real woman's goddess or you know saying that she was truly a woman's goddess um, the, the real feminist goddess the first feminist goddess which is debatable but still you know it was all about how she protected women and that really resonated with me because if you haven't been able to tell I'm an intersectional or yeah intersectional feminist and you know that really resonated with me because I'd always felt this weird need to protect the earth and you know like look out for my fellow people and um, it really struck a chord with me and I started to adopt her symbols and I would you know like I'd wear them on a necklace it wasn't necessarily a crescent moon until later but it would be things like um, like bows and arrows and deer and stags and you know things that were symbols of Artemis and up until that point I was probably not well let's see how do I want to say this when I Fine, kind of got the idea that Finn was dabbling in the craft. Um, there was some talk of goddess and stuff like that, and I was like, well, I know who mine would be. And it even got to the point where I was calling myself a devout follower of Artemis, and I still am, but it's really a pagan. And I don't know, as I also called myself a secularist and agnostic, you know, I didn't know how... Well, the agnostic thing is a different thing, but I didn't know, you know, how in the world would I explain that. But, um, yeah, I was really becoming obsessed with her, and it wasn't until later that I really started to feel like a spiritual change in myself. Um, it wasn't so much so that I felt, well, I did kind of feel a presence, but I don't really know what presence that was, uh, to be honest. But it was just like I was changing. I was coming to terms with who I was and who I had ran away from my entire life. And, or, you know, the, the Britney that I had repressed and, you know, kind of shadowed over to fit the needs of the people around me. And uh, that's really when that started to change. And so after I started to feel this change in me, um, brought on by, you know, Finn's sharing of what he's been dabbling into and stuff and talk of goddess, you know, I was really like, yeah, Artemis, Artemis all the way. And then after that, it was maybe like into the next year, we decided as a family, which was myself, Finn, Jason, the pagan intern, and mine and Finn's parents, that we would all go on a vacation to North Carolina. And I had to ride with my parents. So, this was already going to be a nail-biting experience, but just like every vacation I have ever been on since starting my period as a young girl, um, I got mine the day before. You know, it's like my own personal curse that I live with. You know, I can't go on vacation without Aunt Flo visiting. But it, like clockwork, there it was. And, you know, it was normal the first day. It was the day before. You know, it was you know, a couple little cramps here and there. And it was nothing I couldn't handle. You know, I'm a tough woman, I like to think. Um, and 
you know, it just wasn't all that difficult. Or, you know, there wasn't anything odd about it. And that night, something different started happening. It started getting worse. Like, I couldn't get comfortable, and I maybe have got about um, an hour or two of sleep that night before because they were getting progressively worse, and it was getting to the point where, you know, I really couldn't get comfortable. And, you know, I took my ibuprofen, and I was sitting in the back seat, and, you know, uh, and parents were going on about something in the front, and I tried to tune them out, but they were getting really bad, and about, oh, I'd say two hours, two hours or three hours into this trip, we went into traffic, and this is when they really started, you know, getting bad. It first started out with the pain being so bad that I was physically, you know, like, gripping the, the seat of the car, you know, like, in... Like, I don't know what's going to go on next. If this ibuprofen, you know, two or three hours later doesn't, you know, take effect, I'm going to go crazy. And I kind of did. Um, but, you know, back on subject. Uh, I started, you know, to feel lightheaded. Like, you know, I was faint. Like I was going to pass out. And it was uh, not like I hadn't eaten anything, but I was just, you know, like over the top with the pain. And... Everything, every little thing that happened irritated me. It, you know, just absolutely bothered me to a point where, you know, I was just like, you know, kind of jumping at people or, you know, barking at my parents and just being like, ah, you know. And then as I started to get more and more lightheaded, I, uh, in that same bad attitude, was getting worse, uh, I started to break out into a feverish sweat. You know, like if you have a fever and you start kind of cold sweating, that's what was going on. And I was just at my breaking point. I was thinking, you know, the only way that I want to get any relief from this is if, oddly enough, if I fling open the door and run. <laughs> you know, that, that was at the point that I was realizing I'm going to break down. And this is when it happened. And it's still a mystery to me why I done this or why I said what I said or anything. Maybe it was just my instincts. I know she likes, you know, for you to work with your instincts. But I called out to her. I said in my mind, Oh, Artemis, help me. I can't go on. I, you know, I can't take it anymore. I can't handle it. You know, it's... It was to the point where I was calling out to a deity that probably at the time that I really didn't have, you know, proof that she existed. And, you know, and like the moment after and, you know, not an instant sooner than I, that thought escaped my mind and entered the heavens, it was God. You know, she grabbed it and it just kind of went silent. You know, all the sound around me was muffled and... Um, it was just quiet and silent. And all of that irritation, that frustration, that pain that I had left. And I was just like, oh God, relief, you know, just finally relief. And, you know, I was just sitting there as, you know, it was kind of like time was going really slow around us, sitting in traffic. And, you know, as I was, you know, releasing my grip, my death grip of the seat, um, I kind of felt something staring at me, you know, it, like if something stares at you, you know, you reflexively look. And so I looked out the window, and what was standing at the edge of the road was surprising. It was a doe. Now, she wasn't grazing. She wasn't, um, really acting like a doe would. She was out in a very open place without, you know, a lot of cover, which wildlife instinctively go toward. And she was just sitting at the edge of the road, you know, her ears weren't flipping like they normally do, or her tail wasn't flagged or anything, and just staring. And I was like, that's, that's odd, you know, like, what, what is she looking at? And, you know, it wasn't a decision for her to cross the road, because I don't think deer have a need for gasoline, because that was what was on the other side of the road. But, you know, and it, I was like, that's so weird. And then later on, um that pain started to come back, and I was like, oh, here we go again, you know. I was already ready for it. And before it even started, 
It stopped, dead in its tracks, like it did before. And I happened to look out the window again. What was there? A doe. And it happened throughout that trip that day, where that pain would start to come back, but as soon as it would, it would just be like, there was a deer. And it was like, you know, this is odd. This, is, this has got to be a coincidence. And so, as it usually occurs with me, you know, I'm so in my head, I don't normally hear it or, you know, get the message. But it hit me the next day that I wasn't really feeling that pain anymore, which, was, which would have been odd, you know. And then it hit me. You idiot. She answered you. She proved, you know, she's real. And that, um, I was just like, oh my goodness, this is so, you know, this is just so wild and things. And I didn't know what to do with myself. But then, more than ever, I was like, yeah, this is my goddess, you know. And I've tried to, I'm sorry, I'm going to tear up. But I've tried to think back to what she was trying to say to me. And it was, I've been here this whole time. I've been with you this your entire life. I've always protected you. And now you know my name and you know I'm real. And I'll always be with you. And from that, you know, that day forward, you know, after I realized that, I've tried to draw myself closer to my goddess. And I have. And in addition to that, you know, like, I have tried to make that be like my distinguishing feature is I'm identified with her. You know, when people say you remind me of her, that's like the best compliment you can give me. Not that I'm beautiful or anything. I don't care about that. But that's what I want you to see in me is her. And you know, I really don't ever, um, cry or anything like this, but uh, if you want to know what makes me cry, it's my goddess. And she, to her, this is a symbol of my love, I guess. <laughs> and so anytime I, you know, talk about her, I kind of tear up. <sighs> because she's so great. You know, I tremble and you know, her might and her power. And it's just such an amazing feeling to have something or some deity is so great to see value in you. Excuse me. So this is going to mark the first video in our Artemis series. And um, hopefully they won't be so emotionally driven. Um... But yeah, we're going to talk all about Artemis. If you want to hear more about him, her, Rhiannon, any goddess, just let us know. But this is going to kick off this series. And just remember, until next time, goddess is great, but Artemis is the greatest.